Attorney Tolentino, I'm sorry to cut you there, but why do you now go back to the House of Representatives saying that there's no committee report yet, when precisely as you were filing the, um, the appeal before the Court of Appeals um, yesterday, you were saying that there, they, they were in violation as well of the separation of the legislative and executive, and yet now, in the last sentence that you just said, you're referring back to the committee report. I thought you're, you were arguing that there has to be separation. And now There's you look back at that. Go I, ahead. I would explain that, uh, Miss. With respect to the House Committee, the investigation is only in aid of legislation. Hmm. So therefore, any investigation with the NTC or with the House of Representatives is separate and distinct from the administrative proceeding in the NTC. Therefore, the NTC should conduct an independent, separate investigation before they will give any decision. Mm. And don't you think they've done that? Unfortunately, no. So that's why we're filing a case before the Court of Appeals, the petition for certiorari, prohibition of mandamus, with prayer for injunction and temporary restraining order. And we're hoping and expecting that the NTC will decide in our favor. As you were filing the appeal yesterday, um, I forget if it was you or um, Attorney Rolex Suplico who said that you don't even know what you're being accused of. Um, yes, yeah, but, but again, we go back to the House hearing, um, which you were a part of, which yes. the NTC took cognizance of. It is laid out pretty well, the alleged violations committed by the network. Why do you claim now that you don't know what you're being accused of? Uh, no, Miss uh, Miss Carmina, because we were not given an opportunity to explain. If you check the investigation, we're only allowed to say yes and or no with a risk of a contempt. So there is a possibility that we will spend our Christmas or New Year in prison if if we give an answer that is not favorable to the congressman. To the to the member of the committee, so that's different. That's different investigation. That's why we are. Our allegation is that the House of Representative investigation is only in aid of legislation. They cannot use that investigation with respect to the administrative proceedings in the NTC because NTC has a quasi-judicial function, and they should exercise the quasi-judicial function like a judge of the of the judiciary. Let's go to the issues one by one raised um, in in the hearing at the House of Representatives. Um, the contention is that there was a failure to get uh, congressional consent of ownership um, of shares of stock. Was there a failure to do so, Attorney Tolentino? There was no failure. So there is a congressional, uh, what do you call this, uh, with respect to the with, uh, what do you call this, with respect to the reporting, they, they're talking about we failed to report. But if you read the law about the franchise law, we were there is no specific date when so we are we are on the process of giving uh, information to the house of representative uh, about the about the transfer of shares if there's transfer of shares and second there are also issue about corporation soul and also what do we call this the the soul the corporation soul and with respect to the other corporations the, the kingdom of Jesus Christ is a corporation soul. So there is no transfer of share in case there's transfer of leadership. It's like a Catholic church or the Archbishop of Manila, Archbishop of Iloilo, that, uh, that they're acting, they're, they are corporation soul. So it means if there's change of leadership, it doesn't mean that there is change of shares of stocks. Was there change of leadership? There was change of leadership, I think, in, twin, I think in 2019. There's, there was change of leadership because uh, from Apost Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy to, to Marlon Jacobo. Was there change of ownership? There was no change of ownership. It was change of leadership under the principle of corporation soul. In corporation soul, uh, it doesn't mean that you are the leader. You are also the owner. For example, Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy, he is just a trustee. So what are, what are you then, the so Attorney Tolentino, if that is what you're saying, what are you then in the process of um, um, complying with the House of Representatives? When you claim there's no change of ownership, then what were you saying a while ago that you were in the process of, of we are in the process informing of the House of Representatives? Go ahead. With respect to the 30% shares of the public offering, we, are, we, uh, we form a cooperative I think the shares of the cooperative is 1% plus. 
but still on the process of making it 30 percent because if you read the franchise law there is no specific date when should we comply the 30 percent when but did we are you on the process we are on the process yeah. of complying the 30 percent therefore there is no intent to violate the franchise law of the mm. SMI. There was no, act, there, we were not acting in bad faith. In fact, we are in compliance. We are in substantial compliance with the, uh, with uh, what they call this, the franchise law of SMI. When did you initiate the process? We are in the process because the SMI franchise was approved, I think, 2019. So we started a year after until today and hopefully before the because if you read the law there is no date five years ten years so we can do that as soon as possible yeah but but but, but there is a responsibility you can't send yes, that responsibility right yes there's a responsibility that's why we we comply we 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 are on the process of complying so there is no bad faith there's no intent to violate the law in fact we comply all the laws uh, we, we comply all the requirement. Otherwise, if we are very strict in that requirement, all the media establishment in the Philippines will be terminated if that is the, if that is the argument. The other argument here is that there was a failure in your responsibility to the public when you allegedly peddled fake information. Your reaction to that? If you read the franchise law, the, the public responsibility refers only to intentional false information intentional false information and in this case there was no intentional uh, false information given by SMNI. Why, why fact, do you say there was no fact, false? Uh, can, can I Go finish? Ahead. So Go with ahead. respect, if you read the Philippine Constitution, in case there is inaccuracy of reporting, inaccuracy of any news, it, it's still covered by the freedom of press or freedom of expression. What the Mr. Sellis did he was just asking whether or not there is 1.8 billion funds of the office of the speaker. There was no statement given by Mr. Sellis, uh, but it was just a mere question. Then what did he apologize one thing, one thing, for? One thing, it was a statement. Still, it is still covered by the freedom of press and freedom of expression in the exercise of in the exercise of the of the as a citizen to question. Where San Galing, where uh, with respect to the public funds? Yeah, I completely understand that. But why? Why did he apologize then? To begin with, what did he apologize for? He apologized about. I cannot talk in behalf of Celis right now, but based on my information with Mr. Celis, he was not apologizing about. He has not, he's not asking for apology with respect to the to the, his statement. He only apologized because of the. Uh, maybe damage or injury cost to the House of Representatives. Mm. Let's go back to what you said, that there was no intentional false information um, yes, yes. that was being given, um, but there was red tagging involved. How is that unintentional? It's a red tagging. It's not part of the, uh, of the freedom, uh, what do you call it? It's not part of the legal system. There is no pre principle of red tagging under Philippine law. But still, uh, when we say red tagging, we need to ask for a clarification or definition, legal definition of red tagging because there is no law that talks about mm. red tagging. Still, what, whatever is the statement given, still part of the freedom of press, freedom of expression, as long as there is no intentional false uh, information given. And we believe that the reporters of SMNI, they, were given, uh, they, they did not give any intentional false information. Granting that they give intentional false information, the MTRCB can uh, imp uh, impose a penalty to those programs, suspend or terminate the program, but not the entire network of SMNI. Mm. There's another because thing if that you I... Check, if you there... check, uh, Ms. Carmina, mm. the SMNI, there's a program purely educational. There's a health program about health, a program about law, like the Pinoy Legal Minds, mm. program about tourism, program about business. So it's not only about red tagging, about politics. Maybe one thing that they're not correct, they can suspend the program, but not the entire SMNI network. And that's another thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I think it was Rolex, uh, Attorney Rolex Suplico who said, 
you know, the only programs in question here are two programs. But why are you presenting it as such, as if there was no question being raised about alleged violations um, of uh, the franchise of SMNI? You seem to be focusing on the franchise when it's convenient and when it's not, you then go to the two programs when it's also convenient for you. Explain that for us. Um, Mr. Ms. Carmina, the SMNI are always presumed innocent, always presumed in good faith. Those who have filed a complaint against SMNI, they have the burden of proof to do it. We have no obligation to present that we are, we are in good faith because we are always presumed in good faith. That is the principle of the democratic and republican government. We are presumed innocent, we are presumed in good faith. So those who file a complaint, prove it in court, prove it in proper venue, not, not, in, not, uh, not imposing or not dictating the, the quasi-judicial body like NTC to decide without, uh, without complying the due process clause of the Philippine Constitution. That is our stand and we remain in that stand. On the other hand, when we were talking about the press freedom issue and uh, journalism experts have said that this is not a press freedom issue, um, the NTC itself uh, is in question here. There are those who also point to the weaponization of the NTC. You talk about ABS-CBN, what the NTC did then, and what it is doing now to SMNI. Your thoughts on this, Attorney Tolentino? And uh, ABS-CBN is different from SMNI. I mean, clearly, obviously. No, yes. but I, the question was about uh, yes, the, the so-called weaponization of the, the agency. Go ahead. ABS-CBN, the franchise of the ABS-CBN was already expired. The SMNI franchise is still valid up to for 25 years. So, yes, we believe that the franchise is not a right, it is a privilege. But when a government... Uh, issued a franchise to a certain establishment, like a media establishment, there is a sense of vested right that needs to be protected. There is, there is no, yes, it is discretionary, but still subject to the due process clause of our Philippine Constitution. January 4, there's going to be an administrative hearing. What's your game plan? So we will, we will be there. We, we will try our best to cooperate to the investigation and ask the, SM, the NTC to give us an opportunity to explain and set aside the suspension. And hopefully, if in case the TRO, the TRO will not be issued by Court of Appeals, we're asking NTC to set aside the suspension. And we will cooperate whatever is the investigation grant. But still, please, uh, we're expecting that they should be neutral, they should be fair, and they should be impartial. Well, if that's your game plan to begin with, why did you have to go to the Court of Appeals to file that appeal? If you're going to pray for the same during the administrative hearing come January 4, Attorney Tolentino. That, that's a different issue. We, we are to, uh, the, 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 our filing a case with the, with the, uh, against NTC to the Court of Appeals, we are talking of the suspension in violation of the due process clause. But with respect to the NTC, we will explain our side because we were given 15 days to explain our side. Mm -hmm. So that is our plan to explain our side. But of course, subject to the due process clause of the Philippine Constitution, subject to the relevant laws and regulations. All right. Attorney Mark Tolentino, their lawyer for SMNI, thanks again for taking our call. Thanks for uh, uh, accepting our invitation to be um, our guest on this program today. Thanks again and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, Ms. Carmina.